Carolyn Johnson for inviting me to come and be the moderator and the MC for this event. Thank you very much, Carolyn, as my sister. And um, today is not a sad occasion, today is a celebration. Oh my God. I'm talking about this is a celebration. This is a celebration of the life, the legacy of our dear brother Chuck Johnson. And that's what we're here to do. We're going to celebrate his life and his legacy. Knowing that life in this realm is just ephemeral. It's just temporary and fleeting. And it's a part of the grander plan of the creator's scheme of things. We must not mourn, but celebrate those who transition onto the next realm. We are all aware that no one is meant to be here permanently. Even Jesus had to transition from this realm. So, uh, come on and have a seat. My brother Howard Hewitt just came in. Come on, brother. You, you could? Okay. Nice to see you, Howard. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Okay. Now, when Carolyn first asked me to come and be a keynote speaker and an MC, she was thinking about me doing some poetry. But then we both thought it might be a little corny, you know, rhyming about our dear brother. Then it turned into eulogizing. Then I thought that might be a little bit morbid, but then I realized that any spoken presentation for those who have deceased is actually a eulogy. So you have to please uh, bear with me as I get my thoughts together and I attempt to honor our dear brother. But I will, first I'm gonna ask us all the question. I'm gonna ask us all the question. Are we not very lucky to have been born and raised in the soul generation? I'm talking about the generation of soul. That's when the pure essence of soul was so ubiquitous in our community. We didn't call our music R&B, we called it soul music. We ate soul food. We didn't wear afros, we had naturals. We didn't call ourselves Iggas and Itches. We call ourselves soul brothers and soul sisters. Am I right or wrong? Therefore, Don Cornelius created the soul train. I think Don Cornelius deserves a standing ovation. Can we just give Don Cornelius, can everybody in this room give Don Cornelius an ovation? I think he deserves that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Don also gave us a motto. He said, love, peace, and what? Soul! Oh, you know it. <laughs> you know it. Aretha Franklin was the queen of soul, and James Brown was soul brother number one and the godfather of soul. And he invited Demeter Joe Freeman to dance with him while he was singing soul power. You guys remember that? You see, us, Black Americans, we were a deracinated people that came up through slavery, colonization, Jim Crow laws, the civil rights movement. But we were motivated by what? Soul power. <laughs> soul power. This is all about the soul, you guys. Come on. This is what it was all about. Then, our brother Gerald Brown. <clears throat> Our brother Gerald Brown, with his brother Terry, bless his soul, along with Judy Jones, Patricia Williams, and Hollis Pippins, they were the Soul Train Gang recording group on the Soul Train record label. However, that may have pissed off some of us Soul Train dancers because we thought we were the Soul Train Gang. You guys remember that? We thought that we were the Soul Train Gang. And then here come these good looking Negroes over here calling themselves the Soul Train Gang. They were good looking, and yes, they could sing very well too. <laughs> but you know, that's what it is. How many of you auditioned for the Soul Train Gang singing group? Any, any, any more of us? Yeah, we auditioned for the Soul Train Gang singing group. And then they imported these good looking brothers from Ohio. We like, what's this about? <laughs> But it's all good, you guys. It's all good. It was amazing. So I want you guys to just lean in with me for a minute because I'm getting there. I'm getting there. We were all brought together through one common denominator, and that was the Soul Train. Pam Brown, Dee Dee, Big Jolly Brown, the mini cameraman, photographer, Sid McCoy, 
Please excuse my memory because old people tend to forget it. <laughs> Don't forget Chris. Yes, Chris. There was Dick Griffey, and then there was Chuck Johnson. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Then all of the generations of Soul Train dancers came together to make this black oriented TV dance music show an American legacy. Soul Train is now a very intrinsic and integral part of American history. Yes. Yes. And that is, that's a fact. That is a fact. That is a fact. Many of you in here were a contributing factor to that success, so please give yourselves a hand. For making Soul Train the longest running TV show in American history, and an, and, a, and an outstanding, amazing success. A lot of you contribute for that, okay? No matter what your part was, how minuscule it may have been, how grand it was, but we all contributed to that. So this brings us to Chuck Johnson. Now, before I get started, I would like to share a quote with you all that I came across, and uh, it goes like this. It doesn't matter how famous you are, or how much money you may have accumulated, or how many material possessions you may have collected. When you leave this world, you will be remembered by the positive effects that you've had on other people's lives. Can I say that again? You will be remembered by the positive effects that you've had on other people's lives. And that's going to be the most important thing. And when you look at the generations of soul trained dancers from the 70s to the 80s to the 90s and to the 2000s, I think we can all emphatically agree that Chuck Johnson is worthy of that quote. Yeah. Chuck was our liaison between us and Don Cornelius. For the dancers, Chuck became for Don what Jesus was the God. <laughs> he was the go-between. The only way up on that riser or down the Soul Train line was through Chuck Johnson and of course Pam Brown. Later came Brother Eric, and Eric was doing that, okay. Please excuse my anachronism if my chronology is off, but I'm sure we have all had various degrees of interactions with Chuck. But I can attest that he was the catalyst for ushering me into the professional entertainment industry. I am a recipient of Chuck Johnson's generosity and his belief in me. After his biological, biological children who are here, I can honestly say I stand before you today because of Chuck Johnson. And I think my stories and some of your testimonies that we'll hear this evening are really meant for his children. Because they can know unequivocally how precious, respected, and loved their father was by so many people. When Tyrone Proctor first took me to the KTTV studios, I was just 18 years old. There was this guy standing inside the gate with his arms folded with his forehead in the word. You guys, you guys know, you know, it's, it's impossible to be sad and it'd be too serious because Chuck, Chuck Johnson had one of the greatest senses of humor and that's the kind of person he was. So I want to continue his the essence of who he was, because, you know, this, that's, that's Chuck, you know. So he's standing there with his arms folded and, and his forehead lowered down like that, you know. And uh, Tyrone, he was scrutinizing all of us outside of that gate. And Tyrone greeted him, he said, Chuck, this is my little brother Jeffrey, he just came back from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I had lived there for three years and my mother brought me back to LA. And Chuck reluctantly complied and I was allowed into the studio. That would be the first of many more similar encounters with Chuck Johnson at the gates of the KTTV studios. You guys remember that, yeah? There you go. That meant the world to us dancers. Showing up for the tapings, that's what we call it. You know, the taping. Are you going to the taping? Oh, when's the next taping? Oh yeah, Dick. <laughs> we, we call it the taping, you know. The, the public called it Soul Train. To us, yeah, the taping. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. And that's what we call it. So then, I didn't have a job, I didn't have a car, but I made it to every taping because, because that was my world. But those of you who don't know me, I'm actually from Aliso Village, was in Boyle Heights, which is on the other side of the First Street Bridge, a little 
past little choco, that's where I was born and raised the first 12 years of my life. So that's where I come from. I come from the Boyle Heights area in East LA. Lake. That's where, that's where I'm actually from. So, so, how Chuck and I first bonded escapes my memory, but I'm sure it started with him noticing my antics coming down the Soul Train line, doing crazy stunts and things, and then Don asking me, man, what's your going to do next? <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you can agree, Chuck was always there for us dancers because he genuinely liked us. 